related liabilities. Um, so this is this is the the whole concept um, of all in. So if we look at a little bit uh, from a, a schematic view, how an infrastructure could look like, uh, it's basically you would have uh, in a shared ledger, you would have a partition of the central bank, um, and you would have uh, the accounts from the from the commercial banks. So if from a, a corporate from Bank A wants to transfer money to uh, uh, to a corporate which is connected to Bank B, you would have in a, 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 at the same time atomic settlement of the transaction through a simultaneous update of balances, not just on the on the bank side but also in the central bank uh, partition. So this would allow uh, RLN to become really a settlement layer for settling central bank money and commercial bank money in the same environment. So therefore, um, there are a couple of key building blocks which are described in the paper. So uh, RLN, and the, the whole idea is RLN to become a public-private partnership. So to bring both worlds together, uh, to form a regulated uh, a network, uh, it should be a global network, it should be based on DLT, um, it should be multi-currency, multi-asset, and it should be multi-network, and it should, of course, support programmability. So, and what would it bring us if we would have such a network? It would always be on, so we would have 24-7 uh, um, settlement possibility, it would be secure and resilient, uh, it would be full audit trail, it would have on-chain finality of settlement, which is the important feature I just explained. We would have liquidity optimization, so we will not have different silos where we need to keep track on liquidity. It would be real-time and a single source of truth. So basically, 